What's up, everybody? This is Wallace from A3 Academy, and today's podcast is going to be on freezing point depression, uh, you know, how it works, and more importantly, how to calculate it. So uh, a couple days ago, I told you I was in Siberia, and one day I was driving down this icy road uh, to buy a panda pop with my boy, Pete. And I saw a lot of this going on, where a lot of cars would crash because of the ice, and I was thinking, well, how do they prevent all these car crashes from happening? They salt the roads, but why do they salt the roads? What does the salt do to the ice to make it turn back into water? Well, adding salt makes the freezing point of the ice go below the outside temperature, so it'll just melt right back into water. But why does this freezing point drop occur? This is a phenomenon called freezing point depression. Freezing point depression is just when the freezing point of a solution decreases when more solute is added to it. And freezing point depression happens because if you take a look at ice or something, like a crystalline solid like ice, you have all these molecules that are put together in orderly fashion by hydrogen bonding or whatever sort of dipole attractions. When you sprinkle something like salt, uh, the chemical formula for salt is NaCl, these different ions, they come in and they disrupt all of these different interactions and they kind of mess up this orderly format of all of these molecules, which means that it is now easier to bring this into a liquid state. And that's when the freezing point drops. So you might be asking how much, how much does this freezing point drop depending on how much solute you put in? Well, the answer is this much. All right, that's a bit complicated, but um, this equation was formulated in 2010 uh, to account for the fact that no solution is an ideal solution. Um, just like we stated in our ideal gas video, no gas is an ideal gas, but we treat them that way because it's so much easier to calculate when we consider every single gas to be an ideal gas. Well, the same thing goes for solutions. No solution is ideal solution, but it's a lot easier to calculate uh, the properties of a solution when we pretend that all solutions are ideal solutions. And when we pretend that all solutions are ideal solutions, the calculation becomes a lot easier. It becomes this. This is what's called uh, Blagden's Law, and it has three main things that you have to multiply to calculate the freezing point depression. So this is the freezing point depression in degrees Celsius. This is just uh, the amount of degrees Celsius that the freezing point drops from normal once you add the solute. We have this K sub F, which is the cryoscopic constant in kilograms degrees Celsius per mole. And you can calculate the cryoscopic constant by using this formula right here. You start with R, the ideal gas constant. Uh, we discussed the ideal gas constant in a previous video on the ideal gas law, and we gave a couple of values for the ideal gas constant, so you might want to look at that before you watch this presentation. Then we multiply that by the molar mass of the solvent, which is normally measured in grams per mole. Then we multiply that by the normal freezing point of the solvent squared. And then we divide all of that by the molar enthalpy of fusion. And we're talking molar enthalpy of fusion, uh, which is joules per mole. So keep that in mind. And these are all properties of the solvent, not the solute. So for example, water, which is the universal solvent, and we are going to put NaCl on top of this water, we have 8.314 joules per moles Kelvin, which is a value for the ideal gas constant. Then we multiply that by the molar mass of water, which is 18 grams per mole. Then we multiply that by the square of the normal freezing point of water, which is 273 Kelvin. Uh, we divide all of that by the molar enthalpy of fusion of water, which is 6,012 joules per mole. Uh, evaluate this and we get 1,855 grams Kelvin per mole, or we can convert to uh, more usable units, 1.855 kilograms degrees Celsius per mole. And so 1.855 kilograms degrees Celsius per mole is the cryoscopic constant for water. Uh, it's really important to remember this constant this because it's used a lot. So that's the cryoscopic constant. Uh, our next value here is the molality in moles per kilogram. Uh, we discuss molality in a different podcast on measuring solute concentrations. Um, so if you don't understand molality right now, you should watch that presentation first and then come back here. Uh, molality is just the moles of solute divided by the kilograms of solvent. Then we have I, which is the Van Hoff factor. Van Hoff factor is a measure of particle dissociation in the solution. And what that means is, if we have something like NaCl, for example, and we dissolved NaCl in water, it would not remain as NaCl, it would split into two of the ions, Na plus and Cl minus. And since we have both ions, there are two of them, 
the Van Hoff factor is 2. If we had something else like H2SO4, H2SO4 breaks up into three ions, two H plus ions and one SO4 minus ion, which means that the Van Hoff factor is 3. If we had something like O2, O2 is a molecular compound, which means that the Van Hoff factor is 1. It doesn't break apart in water. So only ionic compounds will break apart in water and have a Van Hoff factor greater than 1. So that's the Van Hoff factor, and that's Blagden's Law. So now that you know Blagden's Law, let's take a look at a problem. What is the freezing point of a solution of 10 moles of NaCl dissolved in 10 kilograms of water? Very simple solution. All you have to do is use the law. We know K sub F, that's the cryoscopic constant for water, 1.855 kilograms degrees Celsius per mole. Now we have the molality of NaCl, which is 10 moles per 10 kilograms, or 1 mole per kilogram. Then we have the Van Hoff factor of NaCl, which is 2. And we multiply them together, and our answer for freezing point depression is 3.71 degrees Celsius. But that's not the answer. That's just the freezing point depression. So if we had our regular freezing point, which is 0 degrees Celsius, and we subtracted our freezing point depression, which is 3.71 degrees Celsius, we would get our new freezing point, which is negative 3.71 degrees Celsius. And that is our new freezing point once we add 10 moles of NaCl to 10 kilograms of water. Now notice in this equation, you don't need to know anything about NaCl itself. All you need to know is the amount that's there and the Van Hoff factor. And when all you need to know is the amount and the Van Hoff factor, that's what makes delta T sub F, or freezing point depression, a colligative property of solutions. So freezing point depression is a colligative property. So now that you know all about freezing point depression, uh, that's all for today. I'm Wallace from A3 Academy. And as always, the more you know, the better you are. Never shut us off yesterday, well it's fine. But we're better than this, so we know it.